So I'm sitting here with Robert Lloyd Lewis, the producer of Dexter. How are you doing today, Robert? I'm great. I've really enjoyed showing you around the sets of Dexter. Oh, man, that, that, that was a fantastic treat. We're uh, huge fans of the show, definitely. Oh, good. Well, it's a closed set, so you, you've been privileged to take a look. <laughs> it's also killed us not to be able to uh, do any photography on this, but uh, understand the, uh, the nature of the game. So that was, that was really fun. Now, you're actually a Mac fanatic, right? I am. I've had a Mac since my SE30 in 1988. Wow, so you go way back. Yeah. What are you using today? As a matter of fact, I developed, a even before that, a television series for ABC called Midas Valley, which was the story of two very young billionaires who came into Silicon Valley and changed the world. Oh, my gosh, yeah. really? Who are you thinking of? <laughs> I, I don't know. Jobs was, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the reason you and I got together was because you've, uh, you've actually written an iPhone uh, iPad app. Right. It's a, um, a word game called Vowel Movement, with a V, Vowel <laughs> Movement. Uh, and it's kind of in the vein of Scramble, a little bit of, of uh, Scrabble mm -hmm. in, in there, too. Uh, it's a grid. Uh, think of the Boggle or Scramble grid, except instead of getting random letters, you have to make the actual words. So we give you five letters. You have to bring them up into the board and create words horizontally and vertically. Uh, and words within words count. And the longer the word is, the more points you get. And then you get, once you fill that up, you get new letters. And you keep trying to make as many words as you possibly can. And the fun of it is that the, once you put the consonants, they get stuck there. But vowels can move at any time, so you can change words around and make make uh, better scores using... Uh, Hence vowel movement, exactly. right? You actually need to move the vowels. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a great pun. Well, I, what I found playing the game was that it was just, like you say, like some games I've played before, but very different in that uh, your your gameplay is not set in stone except for the consonants. So you really got to pay attention where you drop those. But then you get some words and you go, oh, I got a couple of three-letter words, but if I rearrange those vowels in my next play, I can actually make a bigger word. And so watching your scores disappear and reappear was a real interesting change to the game. Yeah, it's it's very fluid in that way. Yeah, so um, how, how does a producer of a top TV show end up making an iPad app? Uh, I was having lunch with my friend Norm. Uh, who's a, a Scrabble-aholic, and uh, he, we were just kicking around ideas for games, and uh, he told me about this idea he had, which was sort of what we ended up with, uh, and so I thought, you know, that's a pretty good idea for a game, uh, but the vowels didn't move in his version, mm -hmm. and then he said, now I have another game, I'm not sure what the game is, but, it's, but I've got the title, it's <laughs> Vowel Movement, and I said, that's it, we'll take this game, we'll let you move the vowels, and then we, we, we actually made a, a board, a, uh, we used cards with letters on them and made an actual board and started trying it in various permutations to see what would be the most fun. We started out with two letters, ended up with five, and f after about three or four months of playing it in various ways, we honed the game to, uh, to what it is now. So where do you get the dictionary? Because a lot of those words I'm looking at going, I don't know that word, but I'll take those points. <laughs> Uh, that was hard. We actually had to painstakingly go through every word in the dictionary. Oh my God. That's five letters or less. Oh. Or in the case of Q's, six letters, because there's one Q-U tile. Bless your little heart for making a <laughs> Q-U tile. That was nice. Yeah, so you can actually get a six-letter word in a five-letter uh, grid because of the Q-U tile, and you get 15 points. So it's, a, it's, a, it's shooting the moon if you can get a Q-U Five letter, six I got, letter. I got, a, I got a quiz the other day. I was really proud of that. Yeah, quiz is good, but you want to get like quilts or something, so you get five letters oh. out of it. All right. Well, I'll keep playing. I'll yeah. try to get better. Yeah. Now, there's a social component as well. I noticed I, I turned my daughter Lindsay on to it, and uh, the next day, all of a sudden, I get a thing saying I've got a challenge from her. So, oh, how does great. the challenge work? Okay, so you play a, a round of vowel movement, and you think you did pretty well. You know, pretty well is 130 is a good score. 180 is a genius score. Oh, okay. If you look at the leaderboard, you see a couple of people at like 190, 210. I'm at 91, I think. 93 okay. is my you'll top get, score. <laughs> you'll get there. Um, and after you play the game, you think, you know what, I think I should challenge mom. Uh -huh. So your daughter hit, there's a Facebook challenge, or you can challenge any existing player or through email. And then the game will, it'll be, the, you'll play the exact same game she did, and you'll try to beat her score. So uh, if you go to the Facebook challenge, then uh, does that access your Facebook friends? How, how does that yes, work? Yes, it, it does. It, it accesses your Facebook friends. 
Yeah. Okay. So it, I think the social component is what's going to make this thing catch on fire because it seems like you can't have a game that you sit and play by yourself anymore. It's got to be that you're challenging other people. Yeah, I think you're right. And our next version, we're going to do an even better job at that. I think we're going to start out with the challenge. So rather than right now, after you finish your game, you can challenge your friends. I think it might be more fun if you start out with a challenge. You say, well, I'd like to play this game with mom. And so okay. you find her, you challenge, and then you and then you play from there. And I think we'll do sets of three games, you know, so best of three. But okay. that's for that's for 2.0. <laughs> so uh, how much does vowel movement cost? Uh, 99 cents. Can't break the bank with that. That's yeah. great. And uh, we developed it. You know, I'm not a coder. I don't know how to code, although I've tried. It's really hard. <laughs> it's, a, it's like learning Chinese. And, uh, but very Hollywood story, uh, my hairdresser uh, had an app. And she told me about the person who, do, who the coder, who she used. And, you know, nobody likes their coders. They're all terrible. You oh, know? really? Yeah, they're slow. They're too expensive. And so uh, she was telling me about how she had a new coder who's absolutely fantastic. Her, uh, the coder's name is Shell Ramsey. It's Shell Ramsey Productions in Tennessee. And literally through my hairdresser, <laughs> I found this coder, and uh, they did a great job at a really reasonable cost and were very responsive to our changes. And... Uh, it was, oh, that's, it was that's neat because I think a lot of people. I'm glad you plugged his his service too because a lot of people think up ideas and then you're like, yeah, but I don't know a guy. You got to know a guy, right, yeah. <laughs> to get the hard parts done. Yeah, it's a she, by the way. It's you're, a she. I'm sorry. Oh, dang it, dang it. Shell. So it's Shelly. Yeah. It must Shell? be something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Shoot. Yeah, we can we can fix that in post, right? We can cut that part out. <laughs> no, no, no editing. <laughs> so how does somebody? end up doing this but you're you're a producer in your day job and you oh uh Kyle can you grab the uh his other invention you're a you're a man of many talents here yes now tell people okay, about so I got tired you know things packed in plastic it's impossible to open them I got tired of cutting my hand basically with a knife trying yeah. to open this so I wonder how many people have died with that Actually, actually, it is the fifth largest cause of emergency room visits. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like car accidents? Just yeah. beating it, huh? Yeah. Wow. So, uh, so I invented this product. It's called OpenX. And it's got a little retractable blade. It's also great for opening everything, op you know, Boxes packages, et cetera. Right. But you just make a little starter hole. I don't know if you can see this well. You make a little starter hole. And then insert the hook in, and it'll just open it up like that. Now, we had actually pre-worked on that one, but right. we, we saw him do it live the first time. <laughs> so, you, so you sell these on TV? sold millions of these. Uh, really? We sold them on television. We, right now, they're in the container store. We sell them in oh. catalogs and, uh, and directly through our website, which is myopenx, O-P-E-N-X dot com. So you just think of, you see problems and want to solve them. Yeah, that's my, uh, my lot in life is I, if a good idea comes to me, I have to, I just have to do it. I love that. So now I want to turn corners here a little bit because I've never talked to a producer before. So we were talking earlier. I asked you what's a producer, and you said it depends. Well, what I said is it's a meaningless term, ah. which is true because anyone who watches a movie or television know, knows that everybody has a producer credit. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so, but there are real producers, and there are producers who get credit for being producers. Okay. okay. The, there's sort of two categories of real producers. One is what we now call a showrunner, and the re reason we call him a showrunner is because the word producer doesn't mean anything anymore. Okay. But the showrunner is the ultimate, the buck stops here guy. Okay. Uh, he's responsible for everything. He's responsible for the scripts, for, you know, everything. So um, he, uh, everything goes through that office. Um, is, is that what you are as a showrunner? No, no, no. no. I'm, oh, okay. I'm a line producer, which means that basically the showrunner will give me a script. Okay. And it's my job to uh, realize that script. So I supervise the production, the actual production of the show. So I will uh, hire the crew, in, always in concert with the showrunner or any other executive producers who are integral to the show. Um, but I will hire a crew. I, we have to hire, you know, makeup, hair, wardrobe, camera. The people grip, who put the uh, the the... Uh, condiments in the cabinet. Every, that's the, those are the set decorators. <laughs> set yes. decorators, right? Yes, everybody. So we have about it takes about 150 people to make Dexter. 
Wow. So we uh, that needs to be organized, and that's what I do. Now, are you organizing the actors when they show up, when they have to be here, that sort of thing, too? Yes. We also – what we'll do is we'll, we'll get a script, and uh, we shoot it in eight days. And wow. so we have to find the locations. We have to build the sets. We have to do all that in eight days. You know, we have to Jeez. construct – hundreds of thousand dollars worth of sets in eight days. Including wrapping entire rooms in plastic. Exactly. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Actually, the plastic rooms are pretty forgiving because oh. you can't see through the plastic. So there's a little bit less detail than you would think <laughs> in the plastic rooms. Um, so, uh, so we have to get all that, all that in line and organized to shoot wow, that. That's a lot to juggle. Yeah. This, now, this is your calm period right now because you're not filming. Right. You wouldn't have time like this during filming. No, no. I will look, would look like a chicken with my head cut off in <laughs> filming. Um, but at any one time, we the writers are writing all the episodes. Mm -hmm. The uh, We're preparing one episode. We're shooting one episode all at the same time. And then we're usually in post-production on three or four episodes oh, at the right. same time. Oh, yeah. Who's, who's handling all of the uh, post-production stuff? Is that you too? We, it, yeah, to some degree. And we have a post, I have a post-production supervisor who works under me. Okay. who's organizing all the posts, because especially these days, there's just so much post with all the digital. Um, right. Because you can film more, you probably do film a lot more, so you have a lot more cutting and, and editing that, to do. That's true. And also, now that we are shooting, almost all shows now shoot on tape, not on film anymore. That's right. why Kodak just went out of business. <laughs> right. Um, but uh, because tape is so cheap, you end up shooting a lot more of it than you would on film. So the editors have mountains of footage to go through and, and no, no more time in which to do it, but they have to do that. Now, you guys all do, your, uh, do all your editing on Macs? We do. We, met it, uh, we edit on Mac Pros. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the Avid, as I was telling you before. <laughs> Not Final I've Cut. I've tried to get our editors on Final Cut. Mm -hmm. They've never wanted to do that. And uh, turned, might have turned out to be the right decision. Did. I, I had did. to eat a little crow when Apple did when they discontinued Final Cut last year and came out with the new Final Cut. But um, they're, they're, most editors in Hollywood on major shows like this are avid, uh, avid aholics. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you guys? Uh, what do you do for storage on things like that? I mean, are you using uh, Drobos or what do you have? We don't use Drobos, but we have very significant RAID uh, arrays. Okay. Because um, we've got. Hundreds of hours. Right. I mean, Off-site backups? I mean, how are you doing all that? Uh, yes. Uh, we, it's all done. Th we basically rent. You know, there's a company that subcon we subcontract to okay. uh, who takes care of all that. But we have they all sorts of redundancy. trucks to carry stuff off. You're not doing any cloud nonsense here. Right, right. <laughs> right. But it is much more convenient now that, um, now that everything's digital. Right. You know, it used to be if you wanted oh. a sound effect, somebody literally had to go across town to the sound effects house. Oh, pick up a piece of tape and bring it over oh, to the editing goodness. room. It's all, it's all done Oh, the efficiency now. improvements, that's fantastic. Yes. I, I didn't know they had to do that. Yeah. Well, and even if you were storing a lot of film, and then you didn't have a backup too, right? If there was a fire or something like that, you're, you're dead in the water. You didn't have, well... No puns in the show intended. No, it's a good point. You had a negative, mm -hmm. and the negative never left the lab. Oh. So if you needed extra prints, you would have them okay. make extra prints. But it, it was riskier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, sometimes we would shoot, uh, we'd shoot a day of filming, and the next day, uh, we'd find out that the lab ruined, you know, in the developer, the lab ruined a scene. Oh, and then you and have to have film to it over again. Reshoot the scene. Right now, with digital on the set, we know exactly what we have. We're looking at the final piece of footage. That's fantastic. Well, I, I don't want to take up much more of your time. You've uh, spent most of the afternoon giving us a tour and all this. I want to make sure we plug everything you got going. We've got OpenX from myopenX.com. Right. And we've got uh, Vowel Movement from, what's the website? I, iTunes. Oh, just, just look it up in iTunes, yeah. Vowel Movement. Right. Make sure you spell that right. Right. And, uh, and of course, everybody should be watching Dexter. we got Season 7 coming up soon. Yes, uh, I think it's September 30th. Whatever's the Sunday closest to September 30th, uh, Season 7 of Dexter. And, and one of our favorite shows. Just, just absolutely love it. And thank you so much for spending the time My with pleasure. us. My pleasure. It was great to meet you.